If you're looking for the best laptop for 3D modeling, then you found the right video. In this video, we're going to start at the budget end and work our way all the way up to the high-end category and talk about each app and the specs you need in order to make sure you pick the right laptop for your needs. And also, we're getting more apps native on Apple Silicon, so make sure you hang on to this video because things are getting exciting in this year's lineup video. First and foremost, let's go ahead and jump into the entry-level laptops. This is the HP Victus and the HP Omen. Now, the HP Victus is a fantastic entry point for 3D modeling laptops. However, I will add a few caveats to the HP Victus, and that is that you are fine getting the Ryzen 5 processor or the i5 processor. You'll have no problems there from a performance standpoint, especially with the single core performance of both of those laptops they'll do well however the concern that i often have is choosing an rtx 3050 or an rtx 4050 i just feel like those two gpus are a little underpowered for what you need for 3d modeling i would start you off at an rtx 3060 or an rtx 4060 now the next caveat is ram you want to be at at least 16 gigs of ram for a 3d modeling laptop 32 gigs of RAM is like the sweet spot. 16 gigs of RAM to me is a great entry point. 8 gigs just isn't quite enough. There's not enough ceiling for RAM. In case you don't know, and that's totally fine if you don't, we're going to go through it right now. RAM is what your computer uses each time you open an application. So let's say you open Google Chrome, that uses 1 to 2 gigs of RAM. Say you open Spotify, another 1 to 2 gigs of RAM. Let's say you open Autodesk 3ds Max, easily 3 to 6 gigs of RAM of RAM. So right there, you've already chewed through your eight gigs of RAM and you haven't even really started diving into the program. You're just running those programs at a base level. And that's why I think 16 gigs of RAM is definitely a good starting point for you. Now, I know that that will increase your budget. I know that that will be hard to swallow because you're like, Ben, I came to this video. You told me we were going to have budget-friendly options. And now you're telling me that the budget-friendly options really aren't even the best options. And why I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to be disappointed in your purchase. I don't want you to be down the road with your laptop thinking, oh my gosh, this thing bottlenecks. And it's just not giving me the smooth performance that I had hoped for. So that is why I always encourage people to push your purchase down the road a little bit so you can save a little bit more money. Go out and do Instacart. Go out and do Uber Eats, whatever it takes to get that extra money. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but I did VIP Kid when I was first starting my business because I was struggling to make money. I taught uh, Chinese children how to learn English. And I did that from like 3 a.m. till 6 a.m. every single morning. So I understand the hustle, the grind phase um, that you need to do in order to get to a level where you can get the gear that you need. I empathize, 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 sympathize. Ah, I'm always bad at those words, with you. So don't think that I am just on my mighty tower purchasing whatever laptop I want. I know it's tough to get sometimes to pull the cash together. So I believe in you. All right, let's keep moving forward here. Um, now that we've explained some of the base specs that you want to be looking for, let's move on to the Asus Tough A16. This is a amazing deal. So you have a $1,099 laptop with the AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS with an RX 6700S and 32 gigs of RAM. This is probably like the best entry-level laptop I could show you for 3D modeling, especially if you're going to be a SolidWorks user, because now we're going to jump into another topic, which is SolidWorks. Now, SolidWorks is a, a program that loves either workstation GPUs from NVIDIA, like an A3000, A2000, A4000, A5000 GPU, not the GeForce GPUs, like the RTX 3060, 4060, 4070, 4080. It doesn't like those. It wants a workstation GPU, or it wants a Radeon GPU, like an RX 6700S, or an RX 6800S, or an RX 6850M. I think that's the GPU off the top of my head. Numbers get all mixed up sometimes. Those are the GPUs that SolidWorks wants. So if you are either a so if you're a SolidWorks user, this is a steal of a laptop. Oh my word, it's such a good price. All right, let's keep moving forward though. We have next up the ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X13. One of the best bang for buck laptops you can get if you're looking for a thin and light on-the-go laptop. Well, actually, I used the wrong word. Bang for buck, it's more like the best premium laptop because you have a touch screen, you have two-in-one capability, you have a large trackpad, you have a thin and light chassis. I mean, look at that. It is so thin and light. You have great battery life with that Ryzen 9 6, uh, 7940 HS processor. It is a killer laptop. Now, it's definitely a little on the pricey side. All magnesium alloy build quality, 
uh, but it is a great laptop. Um, this is definitely more of the mid-range laptop because if you look at next to it, you have a little bit more entry-level pricing with the Acer Swift X. Now, the Acer Swift X is a laptop with an RTX 4050, and I know I told you to stay away from the RTX 4050, but if you're looking for a thin and light, compact, on-the-go friendly laptop and you do some light 3D modeling, that could be an option for you. It wouldn't be my top pick personally, though it does come with 16 gigs of RAM, so it hits our RAM um, measurement. It doesn't exactly hit my preferred GPU measurement. So just keep that in mind. Now, next up on the lineup here, we're going to be looking at the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix G16, another really good bang for buck laptop. We have the i7-13650HX. We have the RTX 4060 and 16 gigs of RAM and a 16 inch display all for around the $1,400 price point. That is a killer opportunity. Um, you also have a really color accurate screen with this laptop. Um, I've seen models depending on the actual screen that you get. Make sure you check the screen because some screens are affordable, some screens are expensive, and they're often on the same laptop configuration. But I've seen configurations with 100% sRGB and 91% Adobe RGB. That's not every single one, so just keep that in mind, but I have seen it. Now, Asus Republic Gamer Flow X16, this is the big brother of the X13. Um, definitely a premium laptop, definitely one of the more expensive setups, but I've seen them on sale recently for about $1749 for last year's model. And let me tell you, last year's model is a good pick because nothing's changed from the feature standpoint. However, what did change is that this laptop now comes with an i9 processor rather than a Ryzen 9 processor. Now, that's great from a performance standpoint. The i9 processor will perform better, most likely, than that Ryzen 9 processor. However, efficiency will be lost. Intel is not as efficient as Ryzen, which means that 2022 models will have better battery life while you're on the go versus the i9 from the 2023 model. However, absolutely killer laptop um, with that RTX 4070. Next up is the Apple MacBook Pro. We have the 14-inch uh, and the 16-inch models. Now, M2 versus M1, I'm more of an M1 fan because I didn't see a big bump in performance increase going from M1 to M2. So if you're asking me, I would save a little bit of money and look for a ref certified refurbished model. I would go M1 Max with 32 gigs of RAM before I would go M2 Max with 16 gigs of RAM because you're going to get quite a big benefit out of that 32 gigs of RAM compared to saying, hey, let's upgrade to M2 because M2 was, in my opinion, kind of nominal in as far as performance is concerned. Now, you can go ahead, comment below, argue with me, yell at me, do what you want. I'd be happy to hear your perspective. Now, keep in mind, we now have native softwares for Mac OS, Mac OS, Apple Silicon. So keep that in mind. Right now, according to my research, we have Autodesk Maya, native on Apple Silicon, Autodesk Fusion 360, and Autodesk AutoCAD. We also have ZBrush, Blender, and SketchUp. Now, apps that aren't native are Revit from Autodesk, Autodesk 3ds Max, PTC Creo and SolidWorks. Those you could run through an emulation. That you could run them um, through, you know, either Windows Parallels or different software that you can basically mimic Windows software on a Mac. But the performance will not be as good. However, the native softwares are going to kick butt. So if you're somebody using one of the new Apple approved softwares, awesome, or native softwares. If not, you might want to avoid Apple until further notice. Um, now, keep in mind that these are actually pretty reasonably priced laptops compared to other 3D modeling laptops that have the performance you need. So as long as the apps are native, I would definitely go for it. Next up is the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 2023 model. We're going to talk about the 2022 model here in a little bit in this video, but for now, the 2023 model, I would not get this laptop with anything less than the RTX 4070. I think personally it's underpowered with both the RTX 4060 and the RTX 4050. And that surprises you because I said 4060 was a good starting point. But with the G14, I was not really impressed with the performance this year compared to last year's model. So we'll get into that discussion in a little bit. I'm going to kind of hold you on a cliffhanger. However, this laptop does come with a 16 gig stick solder to the motherboard and an open 16 gig stick as well. So you can immediately be up to 32 gig sticks with just an extra RAM purchase, which is really nice. So... 32 gigs of RAM at an RTX 4070, this would be a beast of a laptop. And it has a nice large trackpad, large 14-inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, 
thin and light chassis, great battery life with that Ryzen 9 7940 HS processor. It is such a great buy. Next up on the lineup, we have the Legion Lock. This is the Legion's budget-friendly option. As you can see, this is a whole lineup of Legion laptops, and I'm going to go ahead and talk through these as quickly as I can and as efficiently as I can. First and foremost, the budget-friendly uh, option on the series is the Lock. This is Legion's new budget-friendly option. So it's going to have plastic build quality. It's going to have a little bit of kind of more of those budget-friendly SKUs for the CPU. And they're going to have some budget-friendly SKUs for the GPU. As you can see, we have the RTX 4050, which I do not personally recommend. So you could go to Lenovo's website and see if you can upgrade the GPU to hopefully a 4060. And then this laptop would be good to go. I would also upgrade that 8 gigs to 16 gigs. And then you will have a really nice Lenovo Legion 3D modeling laptop. Next up on the lineup is if you want a thin and light laptop that can do some occasional 3D modeling. This is the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 and Slim Pro 9i. So this would be something similar to, say, this Swift X in performance. You're not a dedicated 3D modeling guru, but you do like to dabble from time to time, um, and this laptop would give you that dabble ability. Next is the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and 5i. I've skipped to the last laptop on this lineup i accidentally put them a little out of order forgive me and this is the best bang for buck so we're going to have an aluminum top cover plastic keyboard deck and plastic bottom cover but we're going to have amazing components we're going to have top tier high tdp processors we're going to have rtx 4060s and 4070s we're going to have 16 gigs of ram up to 32 gigs of ram and it's all going to be at a great price point the really cool thing about these laptops is i've not seen them really above the two thousand dollar price point they are high performers at a great price best bang for buck from the legion series now if you want to go ahead and get the premium version of the lenovo legion pro series you're going to go for the pro 7 or 7i this is going to give you an all aluminum build quality it's going to give you an i9 processor or a, a high-end Ryzen 7 series processor. And you're going to have an RTX 4070, 4080, or 4090. And you're going to have 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. Now, the great thing about the Legion Pro 7 and the Legion Pro 5 is both RAM sticks are upgradable. And that is, that is a big win for these laptops. I have one of the Legion Pro 5s right here. And the build quality... The usability of the laptop, the functions, the ports, the high, the high, um, the the brightness level is very high. You have a really good color accuracy, good color gamut range, and so they're just really great all around laptops. That's why they get like glowing reviews from me. I'm not a fanboy per se, but I really do like them. If I'm not gonna, if I'm not gonna put some shade on it. Next would be the Lenovo Legion Slim series. This is somebody who wants really good performance but a slim laptop so here is a lenovo legion slim you have awesome aluminum build quality durable great performance i9 processor rtx 4060 or 4070 and um, man they just they shine this is my favorite out of the lenovo series as far as if, if i was going to buy a laptop i'd buy this one if money were no object if money was an object i would buy the uh pro 5 or Pro 5i, probably the 5i. I'm a big Intel fan personally, even though I know that Ryzen has great uh, efficiency opportunity. I just like the performance of Intel. All right, moving down the line, I hope that knocked out your satisfaction for the Legion lineup. Now we're moving into the high end range 3D modeling laptops. These are laptops that are getting more expensive uh, and also becoming with more performance. We have the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix SCAR 16, 17, and 18. And these laptops have beast processors the i9 13980HX, RTX 4070 to 4080, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. These laptops get really good performance inside of 3D modeling programs outside of SOLIDWORKS. Remember, SOLIDWORKS wants Radeon processor or RTX workstation processor. So just keep that in mind. Next, we have the Alienware M16 and the M18. Really good processor as well. I was struggling to find the exact processor SKUs on these. Um, this is a laptop I've actually never reviewed, but according to the specs, these would be great options as well. Now, keep in mind, um, of course, the live pricing will be in the description below <clears throat> if you want to check up, if you want to check the links or make a purchase. I get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, if you don't see a laptop that you're considering on my lineup, it's not because the laptop you're considering sucks at all. 
it's just not one that I've prioritized as one of my top picks. It's not one that I've seen that I think, okay, yeah, that's one I would personally buy. Now, you might send me one and be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's a great one as well. But what you can do is you can compare the specs, compare the pricing to the ones that I am showing you, and then you can make a decision in relation to what I'm showing you. That will hopefully help you make a purchasing decision. If not, you can comment below and maybe somebody from the community or myself will help you refine your choices. All right, keep moving forward here. We now have the MSI Stealth 16. Great processor, great GPU, and comes with 32 gigs of RAM, all at under, well, $1 under 2000. So that's a great buy as well. The Gigabyte Aero 16 and 14. These are great laptop as well. They have great build quality. They have great specs and they're decently priced. This is a laptop that I don't see a lot of people talking about and I often get confused as to why because they've got a great size trackpad, really nice keyboard, great ventilation, good performance. Um, one area that I don't like though is that their like command center where you control all the fan modes doesn't really work as well as I would hope. It's a little finicky. It's kind of weird. Um, when I put it on performance mode versus silent mode, it doesn't change the performance that much. So that's when I'm like, okay, I can see why people aren't fond of them is that the software is not good, but the hardware is great on these laptops. So definitely one to consider. Next up is the Razer Blade 15, 16, and 18. Also the 14. These are premium laptops. They really emphasize the premium build quality of these laptops. Great CPUs, great GPUs, um, the right amount of RAM, the right amount of storage. But what really makes these stand out is the build quality. I mean, these are like Apple level build quality. And I know they probably hate being compared to Apple, but maybe they don't hate it. But I just like, if you're going to talk about an Apple doppelganger, it's going to be the Razer Blade series. They are very high quality. Um, if you're looking for premium windows, that'd be my, the way to go. Now, I will say that the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 from Asus is not far behind the build quality. They do very well. These are high-end laptops. Um, that uh, don't exactly have the highest spec out, um, but do offer premium design. That is what this lineup is all about here that you're looking at now. So the Asus ZenBook Pro 14, the HP Envy, the Dell XPS 15, which is the first laptop I actually ever uh, purchased when I left my, win uh, my, my Apple fanboyism and moved over and started sampling Windows, was Dell XPS 15. I love the aluminum build quality. I love the... Uh, carbon fiber keyboard deck. It's a really, really cool laptop. Now the MSI Creator Pro Z16HX is like the premium go-to creator laptop from MSI. Definitely going to pay a pretty penny for it, but if you're an MSI fanboy or fangirl, um, that's the one that I would put my money towards. And then finally the Razer Blade 14. Great build quality, great performance. Got that RTX 4060, so you're good as far as making sure you have enough GPU punch inside of 3D modeling. Good to go. Now, it's funny, um, the next lineup we have here are the high-end workstations and the SolidWorks workstations, and these really, you can see, increase in price very dramatically. Um, let's try and explain this. So the reason the prices get so steep on these is because workstation GPUs from NVIDIA are expensive. Um, maybe not expensive to produce, but they're going to make you pay for them as a, as a consumer. Um, now, the reason that these are so important is because there's a lot of software that requires in order to get customer support that you use a certified workstation GPU. So SolidWorks is one of those softwares. If you do not have a workstation GPU from NVIDIA, they will not provide you certain levels of customer support. And that's because their programs are designed to work with workstation GPUs. Now you can get away with a really high quality Radeon GPU and as you can see, the next uh, list I have here is best bang for buck SolidWorks laptops. And uh, they're going to run really well. But if you need support, uh, you may not be able to get the support you need, which is why it's very good to consider um, a workstation GPU if you're a serious heavy lifting SolidWorks user. All these laptops are really great. What you'll notice about workstation GPUs, though, is they're not really prioritized by, brand, prioritized by brands to bring in the newest, newest and latest and greatest CPUs. So it's funny because I've looked and looked for the MSI WE76 or a similar model, and I have not been able to find anything newer than the i9-11980HK. But that's a very, very powerful uh, processor. And so mixed with the RTX A5000, 
That'll be a beast of a laptop. But it is interesting to see these workstation GPUs get like 11th gen CPUs for like a long time. Uh, now, one of my favorite laptops on this lineup is the Asus lineup is the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED, and that one has the A3000 and an i9 13980HX. Now, that isn't quite available yet. I'm, I'm it still says coming soon on most retailers, but I'm sure it'll come out soon, and that would be a killer buy with amazing performance. Now, next up is the Bang for Buck SolidWorks laptops. Now, I mentioned earlier about the 2023 Asus Republic Gamer Zephyrus G14. If it were me, and if you are in the U.S., because I don't know what prices are like outside of the U.S., I would go ahead and buy the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 with the RX 6700S or the 6800S because you can get these laptops for a really good price point, and they are actually better than what I've seen so far out of the 2023 models. Now, keeping in mind that the 2023 model does have an RTX 4090, and that performed very well inside of Autodesk Maya, but if you are using SolidWorks or 3ds Max or PTC Creo, you're going to get just as much power out of the 22 model compared to the 23 model. Now, the rest of these laptops on these lineups, which is why they're called the best bang for bucks for SolidWorks, is because as you can see, they all have Radeon GPUs. And Radeon GPUs, the RX series from Radeon, are really good in SolidWorks. However, they are not certified GPUs. You will not be able to get certain customer support from certain softwares. But if you're looking for a bang for buck laptop that saves you well over $1,000 and gets like 90% of the performance of a workstation GPU, you should be considering one of the laptops on that lineup because they are a steal. Like I mentioned right now, the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 AMD Advantage, I've seen for $12.99, and that's easily a, I think it's either a $19.99 or $21.99 laptop. So the 2022 model is on sale and wants to be purchased by you, my friend. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your purchasing decision, and I will see you here in the next one.